I wish you a wonderful good morning. Wonderful to have you with us again. And let us start this beautiful day with a prayer. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this privilege that we have to be alive and to know you. Thank you that you are always there for us, always waiting for us. And I thank you that you love us so much. Um, yeah, that you desire to talk to us and to reveal things of your heart. Amen. Amen. One thing that we love as human beings are quick solutions. If you have a problem that maybe you have worked on and tried to change many things and then somebody comes with a quick solution that will solve all your problems, how wonderful is that? <laughs> we had in the Corona time, we had many videos on YouTube um, where people were um, explaining to you how easy it is to get really wealthy and rich. You only have to do this and this and then you can uh, grow your own business and then in the end you are selling things but not really you but other people for you and I mean it's it's so easy to be rich to become rich and then you saw those videos from young guys being very um, athlete, athletic uh, having athletic bodies and they were sitting in their nice houses somewhere at the beach and telling you how easy it is you just need to buy their book <laughs> and so the wealth will just uh, ring at your doorbell next day and so it's so wonderful to have simple recipes for success and how many books you can uh, buy four steps to success or your dream body in two weeks or three strategies for wealth how wonderful it sounds so easy, so uh, such a quick way, such a shortcut to success. And sometimes we run the danger to um, maybe also in our faith to search for that shortcuts. Where we have more success as our goal than a deep relationship with Jesus. And the goal really is not outward success but is that deep relationship to Jesus and I invite you to open a verse in the Bible that shows us how much God has um, not only promised but planned for our life and we find that very famous verse in Romans chapter 15 the verse 13 we have heard it many times because it talks in a very beautiful and clear way about that hope and what that hope um, will do in my heart. And it says here in Romans 15 verse 13, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's so wonderful and God has planned so much for us. And I fear that oftentimes we are so hesitant to really ask for that fullness. Here the Apostle Paul, led by the Holy Spirit, prays for the Christians in Rome. That the Christians in Rome might be filled with all joy and all peace. And he knows about uh, complicated life about suffering and challenges so he's not praying for them sitting in their nice house at, at the beach um, having a, a yeah nice wealth but he's talking about spiritual wealth and about the power of the Holy Spirit and we see that power of the Holy Spirit very uh, drawn in a uh, very clear picture in Acts chapter 16 and this is where I want to um, pause and concentrate on this morning in the story we find in Acts chapter 16 <coughs> about Paul and Silas sitting in prison and they were once again sitting in prison and um, yeah not being guilty except being guilty of um, yeah giving a, a new life to a, a lady that was suppressed and oppressed by the devil and we read in chapter 16 verses 30, 23 to 26 where it's uh, talking about them being after they had been severely flogged so severely beaten they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully 
When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a, such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prisons were of the prison were, were shaken. So here, this jailer uh, received the command. There are two guys, very uh, dangerous. Be careful, and they need to be. Um, kept very very carefully and of course we know from other stories the jailer had the uh, responsibility to really look that they are not running away otherwise the uh, the emperor or the the king he will kill the jailer because he was responsible that those guys were not running away so he really tried to do all his the best that they will, would not run away and so he put them into the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks before they were um, beaten and flogged. So it wasn't a tough afternoon, you would say, <laughs> for them. But still, we find them in a in a in a fullness of joy and of peace and full of hope. And how can we learn from Paul and Sil Silas? Um, yeah, the first thing we learn here that prayer and praise. It opens every cell of your prison. It opens every cell. And so beautiful we see. Um, and you could think they were sitting in jail and at midnight they were singing and praising and suddenly there was such a violent earthquake. What a coincidence. And they were so lucky. Suddenly some, some, from somewhere an earthquake appeared. And they <laughs> did not really... Uh, think that way because immediately they knew the earthquake was no coincidence. It was a direct um, fruit of my prayer and of my praise. And sometimes we overlook the things God works in our lives because we maybe um, yeah, do pray, uh, prayer and praise. But sometimes we do not have the open eyes that God opens doors opens doors for us that uh, yeah, lead us into freedom. And it's so interesting that um, the praise and the prayer, this is the one thing that changed everything. So in, in spirit, I think they, they were free before. So they were not coming to prison and being sad and frustrated and complaining to God. Why is this happening to us? We were on your mission. We tried to do something for you. Why are you allowing all this now? So they were definitely not complaining. <laughs> um, but still it says about midnight. So there maybe was a time where they struggled a little bit. And we see that so beautifully in the Psalms. When the beginning normally David had has so much turmoil. Um, and fights in his heart but in, the, but in the end of nearly every psalm you find the victory and so it was maybe with them being at midnight at the point where they knew after a short time of prayer they knew it's no matter where I am no matter if these doors are locked no matter if my feet are in the stock right now I am free and I in my spirit I can stand up and praise and prayer and even be a blessing for many others. And it's so important if we find ourselves sometimes in a prison where we find ourselves being locked up by sadness, by darkness, by self-centeredness, by fear, by so many other things. What is the solution to stand up and to walk out of the prison? It's prayer and praise. It's not only prayer where I duck myself deeper into darkness. No, that's not that kind of prayer we see. No, it's a, uh, it's a prayer that, of course, brings the situation that I am in right now, but especially has the ability that my view, my perspective is not just on my jail and on my prison and on the things I'm in right now, but has the ability that my perspective goes up to heaven again. It's so, so important that I does, do not dig myself deeper into darkness by prayer. 
Because sometimes we think we pray, but the only thing we do is presenting all our needs. This is not called prayer. Prayer is that my eyes lift again from my own circumstances where I realize what is really important. And yeah, that's so important and that's so wonderful that we see in Paul and Silas who had the same Holy Spirit having that, that ability that they yeah, lift their perspective to God. How beautiful is it if I am maybe still sitting in prayer, uh, sit, still sitting in my prison, still having my situation, my circumstances that are maybe so tough, but I have the ability to uh, yeah, lift my perspective every morning, every moment I am in prayer, I have that, um, yeah, I have that um, strategy that I lift my perspective. How beautiful, how important is that? And yeah, they really lift their perspective and they were a blessing for many others. We see not only Paul, but Silas was the first blessed person, I guess. Maybe Paul was the first and said, hey Silas, don't be sad. Let us not be frustrated. God has a plan for us. And it's so an interesting verse we find in Philemon 1.1 where it says... Um, where Paul introduces himself and says, he, I'm an apostle, I'm P, uh, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ. What an interesting perspective. He's not a prisoner of the evil Roman soldiers. No, he's a prisoner of Jesus Christ. So his boss, the one in charge over his life, is not a human being are not the evil forces, not the evil demons that put him in jail. No, 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 no. He knew his boss and he knew everything that occurs in my life has something to do with my boss. And sometimes I do not understand. And many times it's not pleasing to my flesh, not pleasing to my, does not bring me more comfort for the soul. For the soul. But I know who I am in charge under. And so precious because it keeps you from being frustrated because the circumstances of life, of life are not pleasing to you. Paul knew, I have a calling to do. And I work not for my own kingdom, but for the kingdom of God. That means it is not the end of my life if I will end up in jail. No, that's a little station in my life. A little station where I can be a blessing. And how beautiful it would be if we as Christians would learn that God is the one in charge over my life. I, I do not have to fight anybody. I do not have to fight my boss. I do not have to fight the government. We do not see it in Jesus' his life. We do not see, his, see it in Paul. The government is not your enemy. Your boss is not, is not your enemy. Not even your, your partner, your spouse. <laughs> But you have a calling to be a blessing. And it's so interesting how Paul was the example for the younger Silas. Where Silas needed somebody that Paul took him by the hand and said, Silas, let us praise and let us pray. This is not the moment. This is not the moment of being sad and frustrated. Because maybe Paul um, prayed exactly for the earthquake. We do not know. Maybe it just was a gift from God. But the first thing we have to do is I have to open my mouth in prayer and praise. Praise God that He is able. Praise God that He is still faithful. Praise God for everything that He done already, that He has done in my life. And I praise Him for the things He will do still in my life. And we also see not only um, Silas being blessed, but about midnight Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening to them. What an impact it must have had that the prisoners maybe were, who were sitting there for a long time, maybe having us, uh, um, yeah, really uh, uh, awareness of their guilt, awareness of their need, and suddenly there was somebody in my jail yeah, really um, shouting out so much peace, so much joy, so much hope. And this was a great example for everyone everyone around them but also in the end 
not only the other prisoners, but the jailer, he woke up because the whole prison was destroyed and so he was uh, frustrated because he thought all the prisoners would, would run away. He wanted to kill himself, but they could be a blessing also for them. And maybe it's your situation that you are in the prison right now. You find yourself in a situation where you feel locked up. You feel locked up by your life, by your weaknesses, Maybe you think God has left you. Um, I want to tell you, God opened the jail for us. But this is the question, do I stand up in prayer and praise and believe for the freedom God gave me already? And let us also have the perspective that not my only, my, my circumstance right now is the big problem of my life. No, no, no. In that circumstance, God wants to lift up our perspective that we realize this is a station in a season of my life where I need to learn um, yeah, really fundamental truths in my faith, but also I should be a blessing to others. And how wonderful and beautiful is it if I focus my eyes on Jesus, not on the feelings that I have right now maybe, but on Jesus, that Jesus is true, that Jesus is powerful, that Jesus loves me and that he gave me a commandment and a mission that I might be a blessing for others. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you give us those stories that are yeah, 2,000 years old, but still have the same power and the same things will happen in our lives if we walk in that promise that you give us of a fullness of joy and peace and the overflowing hope. And I pray, Holy Spirit, that you um, yeah, give a desire inside of our hearts that we really grab that promise, grab that calling, and really trust you that you will perform it in my life. And it's possible in my life that the fullness of the Holy Spirit really gives me a life of joy, peace, and of that hope. Not in order that I just feel a little bit better, but in order that other people might see something supernatural and godly in myself, that they also are attracted to their life with you. Amen. Amen.